In the last video, I talked about why I decided to get into Super 8 and the benefits you gain as a filmmaker from experiencing it. This time, I'm going to talk about how to choose a camera and some of the pitfalls you should look out for to avoid potentially costly mistakes. I won't pretend this is a seminal deep dive, but it will give you an idea of what to look for. I speak from experience here, having originally purchased a camera that didn't work fully. Super 8 is an old format and with only rare exceptions, the cameras that are on the market generally hail from the 1970s and 80s. They're old and they're all potentially prone to going wrong. Luckily, because a film camera is mechanical with only basic electronics, they can be repaired if you want to pay for it or don't mind putting in the time yourself. But it's generally best to buy a camera that has been serviced and tested to work fully in the first place, and I'll come to that in a bit. For now, let's talk about camera choice. The Super 8 market is filled with what seems like an infinite amount of choice, so much so that it can seem overwhelming. It's far beyond the scope of this video to talk about every single Super 8 camera model, but I can offer some advice on some of the main features to look out for. The first is how the camera is powered. A large percentage of Super 8 cameras are powered by AA batteries, which makes them extremely convenient. On the other hand, there are cameras such as the Beulu 4008 ZM2, which was originally powered by a small NICAD battery. The original cells will be in poor condition now, so it's essential to check that the camera has been reselled, preferably with a brand new modern nickel metal hydride cell. A good Super 8 camera seller will hopefully have tested and serviced the camera, but it is as well to check that the exposure system works correctly. This was one of the functions that went wrong on my Yashica Electro 8, resulting in horribly underexposed footage. Frame rate is also an important area to look at. Do you want the home movie look or a more professional one? If you're after the former, then a camera with simple 18 frames per second capability will suit you just fine. But if you want things to look a bit more professional or you want to edit in the Super 8 footage with footage from other video cameras with a similar motion look, then you'll want a camera that can do 24 frames per second or in some cases 25 frames per second. 25 FPS cameras are quite rare, but an example of a camera that can do this is the Braun Nizzo 801. A beautiful camera to behold. Aside from being beautifully designed, some versions can film at 25 frames per second. It's worth double checking that you're buying one that is capable of the frame rate that you require. Some cameras are capable of slow motion. The number of different frame rates for this varies wildly from 30 frames per second all the way up to 70 frames per second in some rare cases. Slow motion is unlikely to be something you'll use a lot, however, not least because of the speed at which your precious film stock will be used up, but also because of the increased lighting requirements. But it's a neat feature to have on tap, should you want it. Speaking of frame rates, another consideration is whether you want to record or add sync sound to your edits. If you do, you'll want to be looking for a camera that has crystal sync. Super 8 cameras without this can vary wildly in how accurate the frame rate is, leaving you with an editing nightmare if you want to sync sound up later. Bear in mind though that if you do wish to record sound on location, Super 8 cameras are not known for being quiet. Super 8 cameras generally come with fixed lenses, but there are some models such as the Beulu 4008 ZM2 which has interchangeable lenses and is fitted with a C-mount, giving a vast choice of glass. It should go without saying to make sure that any lens with a camera you buy is free from internal dust and mould as well. Another important feature to be aware of is what type of film stock your camera will accept. Most of the later period Super 8 cameras will easily take modern film stocks up to and including Kodak's Vision 3 500T stock. However, some older cameras lack the notches to detect and therefore expose properly for this particular stock. In fact, my current Bolex 480 macro zoom only natively handles stocks up to ASA 140. Although the manufacturer was aware of newer stocks such as the Vision 3 200T and recommends in the manual to set the exposure compensation to minus half a stop. 
Therefore, if you do purchase a camera that doesn't officially support some of the later film stocks, make sure that it has either a manual exposure option or an exposure compensation function. Luckily, negative film can handle quite considerable overexposure and still be brought back into range. In fact, it's often desirable to overexpose slightly to tighten up the grain structure, so it's not a complete deal breaker if you happen to have a camera that doesn't officially support higher ASA film stocks. Prices for Super 8 cameras vary from £100 all the way up to £800 or more for some of the more professionally featured models. You can often find much less expensive cameras for sale on eBay, but I will say buyer beware. Most Super 8 cameras are very old and you should really make sure you are buying from a knowledgeable and reliable seller. It's often worth paying a little bit extra in order to have the confidence that the camera will work fully. Not to mention that the best sellers offer a 60 day cool off period to return defective cameras in some cases. Next time I'll be going into getting your film processed, dealing with editing and delving into the debate about scanning resolution so stay tuned. If you like this content please do like and subscribe and click the notification icon to be alerted to new content and I'll catch you in the next video.